Zachary Clayman in the red machine that you see towards the top of the screen. Toby Sowry in that yellow is just to his left. Field looks good. They await the green flag and off season of waiting is about to go into the history books and a new season of racing is about to begin. Green flag, uh, flag flies and we are racing on the streets of St. Petersburg. It is Zachary Clayman. Sowry's going to try to take a look to the inside, but boy, that's an awfully clean start for Zachary Clayman here in the turn number one. And that was a great idea there for Toby Sowry to go to the inside outside once he realized that he had Oliver Askew in the white car cleared. So Toby Sowry get, got that and look at the run now in the yellow car he's got right behind Zachary Clayman. Almost looked like coming off of that turn there that perhaps Sowry had just a little more speed trying to take a look but Clayman a nice job of holding him off. And I think that was again very smart because he set that up in turn one and because of it got a really good run and Zachary Clayman now under some severe pressure and Clayman gets a bit loose he's got to be careful here because Toby Sowery has done a lot of racing in the wet and the opening lap is almost a bit like driving on the wet. It's super slippery. The tire's still coming up to temp and can be very difficult to manage. Oliver Askew running in that third position wants to let that battle stay within his view, but take you through the mindset as your Oliver Askew. Are you thinking to yourself, I've got to push here to stay up with the leaders or do you kind of let them do their slugging and then let things kind of come to you a little bit? Well, typically you have to almost approach it a bit like, uh, like interval training and that you go for a hard push for a few laps as Toby Sowery is now showing himself in the mirrors of Zachary Clayman. You have to kind of push a little bit in intervals. So you go for a couple of laps, you see what the car will give you, then you set back for a little bit to save those Cooper tires, and then you go for another push, and you just kind of keep doing that until you eventually, hopefully, pressure the person ahead of you into a mistake. But at the moment, Toby Sowery and Zachary Clayman pulling away here from Oliver Askew. And now he's being challenged here by Robert McGinnis, and is he going to go around the outside? He is! Boy, McGinnis tried to push to the outside, but now all of a sudden, Renis BK gets that spot right back. Nice piece of drive. Uh, but Robert McGinnis in the blue and white car is making his intentions known. He feels like he's got a better race car at this point in time and uh, is not going to let his eyes off of Renis BK. This That's is a great battle. Battle for the fifth position. And now all of a sudden, Ryan Norman wants to get up there and play with him. The lead down to one second, and he is burning through push to pass. Down to 14 to go. So I think now he's been told, go for it. You have 14 push to pass to go. Now is your time to be aggressive. Now the question is, how many push to pass for the leader, Zachary Clayman? Because Anders at some point, oh, you see him get a little bit loose there, but he might need some as well just to try to hold off Toby Sowery, who has shaved it down now to nearly just a one second advantage for Clayman. And let's see here with Toby Sowery, and he's probably going to pop here in the mirror just to show himself. No, it doesn't do it this time. But he's clearly got the pace advantage here. So the question is, how can he set up here? Zachary Clayman, he's got another good run here. Coming off of turn three here, will probably be another, yep, another push to pass there. So he's now within seven tenths of Zachary. This could heat up with two laps to go. He has shaved the lead nearly in half, has Toby Sowry and Zachary Clayman trying to work his way around. But boy, he has to know that rookie is right on his heels, Anders. Uh, and now coming onto the back straight, out of turn nine, another opportunity. Let's see, does he go for it? Yes, he does. There's another push to pass. Toby Sauer, he's just got to keep hitting the button. He can basically push him for the entirety of the next two laps. As they work their way around now, and again, Sowery trying to know when to use that button, and Zachary Clayman trying to hold him off. That lead is down to nearly just a half a second now. And now is the crucial time. Coming off turn 14, how much traction do you have? I think he's going to be a little too far back. He is hard on the push to pass, but it could be too little, too late here for Toby Sowery. He's showing himself, but not close enough. The white flag is out just under 1.8 miles left here for Zachary Clayman. And Zachary now again going to be on the push to pass coming out of turn three. He's got to be really deep on the brakes into turn four to catch up to Zachary Clayman. But more than likely, his final overtaking opportunity is going to come in turn 10. So he's got to have to set up here through the infield. This is through turn five, six, seven. And now coming up to eight, nine. And he needs to get a super run coming off turn nine just here to stand a chance. Don't know whether or not Salary's going to have enough before this is an impressive run for this young man. Ah, uh, this is fantastic stuff here. And he's in the draft, seven push to pass remaining, no problem there, can't get it done. He is looking every inch though, is he not, Anders? He's trying to find the area to it. Yeah, he is, and at this point, the only thing he can hope for is from a mistake from Zachary Clayman in the final corner. Zachary Clayman comes around, the Canadian, the native of Montreal. He had said that 
He thought he might be in the NTT IndyCar Series. The funding wasn't there, but it appears as though the win is going to be. Checkered flag is out. Zachary Clayman wins round number one of the 2019 Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires, winning here on the streets of St. Petersburg. <laughs> How about that? Zachary Clayman about to get out of the car. Katie Hargett, it's an excited victory lane. And Zachary Clayman Demello leads from green flag to checkered flag in the very first race of the Indy Light season here at the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. The crowd cheering for him in that big win. Zach, we're used to seeing pretty aggressive moves from you, but this seemed like a very calm race for you. Uh, yeah, at the beginning I got away and um, I thought I'd be able to maintain the gap, but I didn't. So at the end I was getting a little bit nervous and we managed to hold on enough from for him not to catch us. So. You kind of led right to my next question because at the end there, we saw a few slides, a few mistakes. Was that due to the tires or getting a little nervous that Toby was catching you? Um, a bit of both. I mean, the Cooper tires are great throughout the race. Um, I pushed really hard early on to break the push to pass barrier. And then at the end, we just dropped off a bit, a bit of me, a bit of car, um, a bit of tire. But all that matters is we won today and we'll make some improvements for tomorrow. Yeah, Anders and Jake, Zach making a big statement in his first win of the season. Oliver Askew on the inside for Cole. About to set the, uh, the start here of the first of 40 laps. It's Oliver Askew there. You see him in the white machine. Arenas VK just now popping in behind him, and I think they didn't like that start. Got a little bit wide behind Oliver Askew. Yeah, and it was a bit of a different start compared to yesterday. Zachary Clayman held him really, really slowly up to the line, whereas this uh, Oliver Askew rolled quite a bit more speed through turn 13. Field wasn't completely in order, so they decided to throw out the yellow flag and, and a big wiggle in the middle of the field as well. I couldn't quite make out what car that was, but uh, Nor yeah, Ryan Norman in the gray and, and red car, so good save for him. Have you guys had that before? What's the mindset when you, you think you're getting ready to go green bottle and then all of a sudden, whoa, 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 hang on. Well, you know, I think it's, it's pretty good whenever you get another lap because it does take some time to get some heat into these Cooper tires because I guess it's a little bit easier in the afternoon, but in the morning, it just, when everything is so cold, it takes a while to get them hot. So I think these guys are going to be thankful for that, and uh, they're going to get to turn one a lot more prepared than this than this past time by. Yeah, we saw track temperatures upward of 120 degrees yesterday. Still 30 degrees off of that right now, Anders. So yeah, it, it is getting plenty warm. But again, the humidity is, is way up, and we have a much stronger wind today, so I think it's still going to be a very difficult thing with that tailwind into turn one and these cars slipping and sliding. And uh, personally, I always hated when you got the yellow flag on, a, on an initial start because I was like man I was ready to go and especially if you got a good initial jump and then the yellow comes out but uh, anyhow here we are one corner to go and then we'll hopefully get the green flag. Deja vu all over again but we'll try it again this time a little bit better start it appears behind Askew again just to his left that is the maroon of Renus VK we await now they watch boy they are really grouped up this time and everybody minding their P's and Q's we are green we are racing back here on the streets of St. Petersburg 10 cars heading their way into turn number one. Oh, and a big moment for Renus VK in the red car can he hang it on oh, side by side through turn two that doesn't usually end well oh and Askew's in the wall. Askew got pushed down, it appears, towards the outside. Boy, what a disappointment for the pole sitter. Renus VK, just when it looked like he might have been the one to lose it, but instead it's Oliver Askew that ends up here with the caution on lap number one. We'll get a better look at it, Anders, but I'll tell you what, we talked about it. Turn one, turn two gets very, very tight. Turn one, and we're seeing Oliver Askew here is moving around the cockpit, he's okay. So we're going to have Renus VK here do the Toby Sowery move from yesterday. Try and hang it around the outside. Is doing that, but too wide through turn two just does not work. Look at this. Oh, and Renus VK bumps the curb and jumps into Oliver Askew. That is what happened. That is pretty much exactly how Will Power ended his race last year. Just jumped that inside curb, except in that particular case, he spun it around and hit the wall. And, and in this case, Renus VK jumps in to the side here of Oliver Askew and launches him into the barrier. Man, that's a big hit for Oliver Askew. Renus VK gets a little bit loose as he starts to head now towards the green flag and restarted. Oh, and that wasn't just a little bit loose. You could see the tire marks there coming off the final corner, but still with a good enough gap here. And no one can really do anything with Robert McGinnis either. So a clean first corner here. But the question is, what's going to happen into turn four as we see Toby Sowery in the yellow car right on the heels here of, of uh, David Malukas. What can he do? 
Boy, you see that. Everybody got bunched up behind Clay and did a nice job three there wide. holding up again. It's now suddenly three wide, and Malukas is going to get up the play. Oh, but look at Sowery hanging around the Ooh. outside. What a great move for David Malukas to pick up two spots. Brilliant, brilliant there on the breaks in the turn four inside, and then the outside move around Sowery. So Toby Sowery here is going to have that extra 50 horsepower coming onto the front straightaway. Zachary Clayman won't. Let's see what happens when you have McGinnis in the wall. Robert McGinnis was running in the fifth position, and now all of a sudden a problem for car number 27. We'll get a better look at it. But then the other thing this does, you had talked about the fact that Clayman could not use that push to pass. It's going to bunch everybody up here, but let's take a look and see if we can find out what happened. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Caution comes out, and this is a huge blow, not only for Robert McGinnis, who's in the wall, but Renus VK, who had a seven-second lead across the line last time by. He won't like that because Sowery is charging, man. Oh, and Robert McGinnis completely misses the apex in turn 10. Tries to do everything he can, but it's too little, too late. Smacks into that concrete barrier. And, well, that's not very forgiving material, is it? I think we had said earlier that oftentimes you could start to turn in a little too early. That time, Robert McGinnis Sanders turned in too late. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, I wouldn't be surprised as actually as he came to a halt there, I got a view of his left front tire, and you could see there was a huge flat spot there. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that he flat spotted that tire so much so that he couldn't get the car slowed down in time. This is series rookie against series veteran. And right now, the rookie has the better end of it, but it is still an entire lap to go after they've seen that white flag. So still several turns to go for Renus VK. Yeah, and one more push right here for Zachary Clayman. Let's see what he can do. Extra 50 horsepower. I think he's too far back. Now Renus VK, all he needs to do is hit his marks here into turn 10 and then again in turn 13, and he should be good. Boy, Renus VK really looks good coming off those corners, Anders. Going through those corners, it seems. Clayman just is not able to close in that gap. No, he's not one corner to go here for Renus VK, and nothing that Zachary Clayman can do. Zachary Clayman is going to see the flag that he saw yesterday, but this time he's going to see that checkered flag with a car in front of him, and it waves for Renus VK, who wins race number two here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Wow, what a thriller of a race. I mean, from start to finish, just absolutely fantastic Listen, racing. He earned it, though, right, Anders? Because oh, Renus big time. VK, I mean, not only do you have that incident at the beginning, you've got to regroup, and then at the end, another incident with Robert McGinnis that bunches him up, and he's got to hold off the field. Renus VK is up. He is out of the machine. He is celebrating his first win in the Indy Lights. Katie? And a big win for the rookie, Renus VK, who holds off veteran Zach Clayman for his very first win in Indy Lights. Renus, this was also the longest race of your career. Some congratulations from family, the longest race of your career. How did you keep your concentration all race long? Um, yeah, it was, first of all, a great race. Uh, a little uh, touchy at the start, but um, yeah, that's racing. And uh, I feel sorry for Oliver for uh, retiring from the race. But um, yeah, the rest of the race was great. Um, yeah, the car was great and just everything was was right and unfortunately the safety car came out with a few laps to go but it all ended well and uh, yeah, I'm super happy for my first Indy Lights win. You had a three second lead when that yellow came out so I'm sure that's something you weren't expecting. What were your thoughts when you saw Zach Clayman in your, in your mirrors? Uh, I knew it was going to be tough. He's a very experienced driver. Um, he drove IndyCar last year here and he was quite successful too. So um, yeah. I saw him in my mirrors, but I thought, just do my own thing and do what I did before, and it all worked out. A veteran wins race one, a rookie wins race two. We're all set for a great season.